we are going to go over a problem involving conservation of mechanical energy. And this is the problem or the question we're going to try to answer. We want to know what are the final velocities of object number one and object number two. And we're going to do this using our equation for conservation of mechanical energy. The initial mechanical energy equals the final mechanical energy. So what's going to happen is we have this object number one it has a mass of 10 kilograms. We're going to let it go. It's going to fall through this distance of 3 meters. Then we have object number 2. It starts 3 meters off the ground, but it's going to slide down this ramp. This ramp is obviously longer than 3 meters, and the mass of this object is 25 kilograms, two and a half times greater than that of object number 1. We want to know what are their final velocities, their velocities just before they hit the ground surface. We're going to use our equation for conservation of mechanical energy. And before we start, I just want to point out that with this is a conservative system. That means that there are only conservative forces and no non-conservative forces, and that basically means there's no friction. When object one falls, we're going to ignore air resistance. When object two comes down the ramp, we're going to say there's no friction between the object and the ramp. Let's remind ourselves the equation for potential energy is the mass times g times the change in height, and for kinetic energy, it's one half the mass times the velocity squared. Okay, now this is the equation we're going to use. And we're going to start off looking at both objects. And both objects are standing still, they're not moving, they have no velocity, and therefore they have no initial kinetic energy. We can make that go to zero. Now both objects have some height, 3 meters, they both have some mass 10 and 25, so they both have some potential energy, so we're going to leave this term in here in our equation. Now we're going to, so they have some initial potential energy. Now we're going to release number one, it's going to fall down to the ground. It's going to, we're going to release number two, it's going to slide down the ramp. Just before they hit the ground surface, they have lost all of their height. If they've lost all of their height, then they have basically lost all of their potential energy. So the final potential energy for both objects is zero. Now, as they fell, they gained some velocity, they accelerated their velocity increase, so they both have kinetic energy. But for both objects, we can say that the, their initial potential energy is equal to their final kinetic energy. They started with some potential, they lost all their potential as they came down, that energy was converted into kinetic energy. So this statement is true for both objects. Now, let's look at object number one a little more closely. We can expand this because our equation for potential energy is basically mg change in h. For kinetic energy, we said it's one half mv squared. So you can see we said that um, the mass of number one times g, the acceleration due to gravity, times the change in height is equal to one half times the mass of number one times the velocity squared, or the final velocity squared. Now, you should notice something very interesting we have mass 1 and mass 1 on both sides. We have like terms on both sides of our equation. That means we can actually cancel m1 on the left and m1 on the right. Now you should notice that means we got rid of the mass. Therefore, the velocity actually does not depend on the mass. Let's solve this for the final velocity. We have 1 half final velocity squared. We're going to multiply both sides by 2. That'll get rid of our 1 half. We're going to take the square root of both sides. And you can see the final velocity of number 1 is equal to the square root of 2 times the acceleration due to gravity times the change in height. There's no mass term in that equation. The final velocity does not depend on the mass. We have a constant, a constant, and a change in the y. So the final velocity of number 1 only depends on its change in height. So now we can plug our values in, square root of 2 times 9.8 times 3, and we get the final velocity is 7.7 .7 meters per second. So the final velocity of object number 1 just before it hits the ground after falling through a distance of 3 meters is 7.7 .7 meters per second. Now you should kind of know already from physics that the final velocity, the time it takes, does not depend on the mass when something falls straight down. It all, all, everything 
independent of the mass, accelerates at the same rate, 9.81 meters per second squared, the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, that's the final velocity for number one. Let's look at number two. Number two has a mass of 25 kilograms, two and a half times greater that of number one. Now we said this equation up top here, and this equation is valid for number one and for number two. So if we were to go through the same process for mass number two, we would come up with this same equation, except we would have mass two and mass two on both sides. That means that once again, we could cancel mass number two and mass number two, and we would end up with the same equation for the final velocity of number two, it would be the square root of two times g times the change in y. Well, they both fall through the same height even though this one slides down the ramp, it's falling through a change in height of three meters. So once again, we have the same equation. The final velocity is two times 9.8 times three meters. The change in y is not the length of the ramp. It's the height, the vertical height, the y coordinate, the height that through which the object falls. So that means that once again, the mass of, excuse me, the final velocity of number two is not dependent on its math, mass and would be equal to, would therefore be equal to the final velocity of mass number one, even though the mass of number two is two and a half times greater than that of mass number one. So it's important that you see that. The velocity, the final velocity for each object is independent of its mass. Now this is only true, especially for the object that comes down the ramp because there's no friction. Okay, if there was friction, then their velocities would not be equal. But in this case, watch right here, the velocity of number one, the final velocity of number one is equal to the final velocity of number two. Now it's also interesting to note that the time it takes for number one to come and travel through that three meters would be less than the time it would take for object number two to slide down the ramp. The accelerations are different, but the final velocities are the same. Because this one, number two, would be accelerating at a lower rate, but for a greater amount of time. So their final velocities are the same, but their times would not be the same. Okay, isn't that fascinating? They both have the same final velocity. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that as interesting as I did. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up or a nice positive comment in the comment section below, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.